discover how your beliefs shape your reality and the hidden power behind Neville Goddard's teachings. Are you ready to confront the contradiction between the divine and the human, and transform your perception of good and evil? This video will unveil ancient secrets that could change your life forever. Don't miss this profound exploration of your faith is your fortune. Click now and embark on your journey towards true liberation. In the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 24, it is stated, I am he, if you do not believe that I am, you will surely die in your sins. Likewise, in the first chapter of John, verse 3, it is declared, All things were made through him, and without him, nothing that exists would have been made. These assertions are difficult to accept for those who have been educated in the various systems of orthodox religion. Nevertheless, there lies the truth, all things, whether good, bad, or indifferent, were created by God. God, therefore, created human beings in his own image and likeness, as expressed in Genesis, chapter 1, verse 27. And apparently, to increase this confusion, it was affirmed, then God looked upon all his creation, and behold, it was very good, Genesis, chapter 1, verse 31. How can one confront this apparent contradiction? In what way can man reconcile that all things are good when what he has been taught denies this fact? Either God's understanding is erroneous, or there is something radically wrong with man's teachings. In the Epistle to Titus, chapter 1, verse 15, it is declared, To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are corrupted and unbelieving, nothing is pure, rather, both their mind and conscience are defiled. This is another enigmatic statement, since generally, in the realm of religiosity, those who are considered the good, faithful, puritanical, and devout are precisely the most prejudiced people that exist. Now, relate the previous passage to this one, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. In this way, an insurmountable barrier is erected against all the self-appointed judges of this world. However, such declarations lack meaning for those hypocritical judges who blindly distort, destroying their true sense. They firmly persist in the conviction that they are making the world a better place, while man, ignoring that his world is the projection of his own consciousness, strives in vain to conform to the judgments of others, instead of following the only judgment that truly matters, his own judgment about himself. When Jesus discovered this marvelous law of the autonomy of consciousness, he proclaimed, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth, John, chapter 17, verse 19. He understood that his consciousness was the only reality, and that objectified things were nothing more than different states of consciousness. Jesus warned his followers to seek first the kingdom of heaven, the state of consciousness that produces the desired objective, so that all things would be added to them. He also affirmed, I am the truth. He knew that man's consciousness was the truth, or the cause, of everything that man perceives as his world. Jesus understood that each individual's world has always been shaped in his image and likeness. He recognized that man sees his world in the way it is because, in the same way, that was how he, the man, also was. In short, man's conception of himself determines the way he perceives his world. All things were made by God, his consciousness, and without him, nothing that exists would have been made. Every creation is considered good and very good because it is the perfect image and likeness of the consciousness that produced it. To be conscious of being a thing, but to express something different from what one is conscious of being, would be a violation of the law of existence and, therefore, would not be good. The law of existence is never transgressed, man will always see himself expressing that which he is conscious of being, whether good, bad, or indifferent. His expression will always be a perfect portrait of his own conception, and that is considered good and very good. Not only were all things made by God, but all things are made of God. We are all children of God, and God is one. All things are merely projections or divisions of the one whole. God, being one, makes himself appear as another, because there is no other. The Absolute cannot contain within itself anything that is not itself. If it could, then it would not be absolute, it would not be unique. Commands, to be effective, must be directed to oneself. I am that I am is the only effective command. I am the Lord, and there is none else. 
you cannot command that which you are not, because there is no other. You must command yourself to be that which you desire to exist. Let me explain what I mean by an effective command. It is not about repeating like a parrot the statement I am that I am. Such empty repetitions would be stupid and useless. It is not the words that make a command effective, but the consciousness of the realization of your desire. When you say I am, you are declaring to be. The first verb in the statement I am that I am indicates what you conceive about yourself, the second verb, am, is the affirmation that it is already realized, that you are what you conceive of yourself. This entire drama unfolds within you, with or without the use of words. Be still and know yourself. This stillness is achieved when the observer observes the observer. Silently repeat, but with feeling, I am, I am, until you lose all consciousness of the world and feel only being. Consciousness is the knowledge that you are God, the Almighty I am. When this is understood, define what you desire to be, feel yourself to be the desired thing, I am thus. This understanding that you are what you desire will give birth to an emotion that will flow through your entire being. When this conviction is established and you truly believe that you are what you desire to be, then the second M will be pronounced as a cry of victory. This enigmatic revelation of Moses can also be uttered in three distinct stages, I am, I am free, I truly am. No matter how things around you may seem to be, all things make way for the coming of the Lord. I am the Lord, and I come in the image of what I am conscious of being. No inhabitant of the earth can oppose my arrival or question my authority to be what I am conscious that I am. I am the light of the world, crystallized in the form of my own self-conception. Consciousness is the eternal light that crystallizes only through its own conceptions. Change your conception of yourself, and you will automatically change the world in which you live. Do not try to change people, they are only messengers who reveal who you are. Renew yourself, and they will confirm your change. Now you understand why Jesus sanctified himself instead of others, because to the pure, all things are pure, because in Christ Jesus, the awakened consciousness, there is no condemnation. The key lies in elevating our consciousness, in recognizing our true divine identity, and in shaping our reality from that transformative knowledge. We are the creators of our own destiny, and faith in ourselves is the driving force that propels us towards the manifestation of our highest aspirations. May these words resonate deep within your being and inspire you to embrace your divine nature, to live from the purity of your consciousness, and to sculpt the world you desire to experience. Remember, you are the Lord of your reality, and everything you behold is a reflection of your own being. Sanctify yourself, and the world will transform around you. You are the light that illuminates your path, and your unwavering faith is the fortune that awaits you. Embrace your greatness and allow yourself to shine in all your splendor. Awaken from the slumber of self-condemnation and embrace the fundamental principle of existence. Cease passing judgment on others, but also refrain from judging yourself. Listen attentively to the revelation of those who have attained enlightenment. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, except to him who considers it unclean. To that individual, it is certainly unclean, Romans, chapter 14, verse 14. And once again, we are reminded, blessed is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves, Romans, chapter 14, verse 22. Stop questioning whether you are worthy or unworthy of proclaiming to be that which you yearn to be. You will only be condemned by the world to the extent that you condemn yourself. There is no need to deliberate over anything, the entire creation has already been consummated. The principle by which all things are created, and without which nothing that exists would have been made, is eternal. You are this principle, your consciousness of being is this immutable law. You have never manifested anything that you were not conscious of being, and you never will. Assume the consciousness of that which you desire to express claim it until it becomes a natural expression of your being. Feel and live internally in this sensation until it materializes in your reality. Here, I present to you a simple formula, shift your attention away from your current conception of yourself and direct it towards your ideal, that ideal which until now you considered unattainable. Assume that you have already achieved your ideal, not as something you will attain in the future, but as something that is part of you, that belongs to you in this very instant. 
do this, and your current world of limitations will fade away as your new claim emerges. It is like the phoenix rising from its own ashes. Do not struggle against your problem, for your problem will only persist as long as you are conscious of it. Divert your attention away from your problem and from the multitude of reasons why you believe you cannot reach your ideal. Focus your attention completely on what you desire. Thus says the Lord, do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude that comes against you, for the battle is not yours, but God's, 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 15. Leave everything and follow me. In the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles, proclaim your freedom. The consciousness of freedom is the father of freedom. There is a way of manifestation that no man knows. You will not have to fight in this battle. Take your position, stand still, 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 17. I am the Lord, I am. Your consciousness is the Lord. The consciousness that the desire has been achieved, that the creation has been completed, is the Lord of all situations. Pay attention once again to this promise, you will not have to fight in this battle. Take your position, stand still, and see the salvation that the Lord will give you. In you, in this particular consciousness with which you identify, resides the Lord who seals the covenant. He, without any help, will establish anything that you agree upon on earth. Will you be able, in the face of an army of reasons that demonstrate that it cannot be done, to silently enter into an agreement with the Lord about what will be done? Now that you recognize the Lord as the essence of your consciousness, can you become aware that the battle is won? Can you, no matter how close and threatening the enemy may seem to be, remain in your confidence, standing firm, knowing that victory is yours? If you can do this, and if you do it, you will witness the salvation of the Lord. Remember the reward for the one who perseveres. Be patient, maintain the deep conviction that all is well. It is finished. No matter what you hear or what you see, you must remain unshakable, conscious that in the end, you will emerge victorious. All things are made through such agreements, and without these agreements, nothing that exists was created. I am that I am. In the book of Revelation, it is recorded that a new heaven and a new earth will arise. John, knowing this revelation, received the instruction to write, it is done. Heaven is your consciousness, and earth, your materialized state. Therefore, accept it, just as John did. It is finished. All that is required of you is to seek a change, to elevate yourself to the level of that which you desire, without worrying about how it will manifest. Accept that it is done, feeling the naturalness of being what you want to be. Let me share an analogy that may help you understand this mystery. Imagine that you enter a movie theater in the middle of a showing that is already ending, just in the final moments of the film. All you manage to see is the happy ending of the movie, but to understand the complete story, you decide to wait for the next showing to watch the film in its entirety. During a dramatic sequence, the protagonist suffers from being unjustly persecuted by accusations backed by false evidence. The entire plot draws tears and more tears from the audience. But you, having previously seen that the story has a happy ending, remain calm, knowing that, regardless of the direction the events take, the outcome is already written. Similarly, visualize the end of what you seek, witness the scene of the happy ending. Consciously feel that you express and possess what you desire to express and possess, and through faith, knowing the outcome in advance, have confidence in creating this conviction. This understanding will sustain you through the necessary interval of time for the image of what you visualize to be revealed to you. Do not seek help in the mind of man. Feel it is finished. Affirm now to be conscious of that which you desire to be as a human being. Always remember that creation has already been completed, and that you are the eternal principle by which all things are made. Your consciousness of being is the immutable law that governs your reality. Assume the consciousness of your desire and persist in that assumption until it becomes your lived experience. Do not be intimidated by apparent difficulties or by the limiting opinions of others. Keep your focus on your ideal and trust that victory is already yours. Remain steadfast in your conviction, knowing that in the end, you will triumph. Embrace the revelation that a new heaven and a new earth will arise in your experience as you transform your consciousness. Accept that it is finished and allow this truth to permeate your entire being. 
elevate yourself to the level of your desire and feel the naturalness of being that which you yearn to be. Do not worry about how it will manifest, simply accept that it is already done.